in college, everyone is taught that the first step to making a commit to a repository is to use the command git add dot. And I want to show you a better way today. So let me first explain why is git add dot not always the smartest move. So in this example, I have a git repository. And when I run git status, you can see there's one change I've made into salaries.tsx, which is a legit change. I want that to be committed. The other is .cache ds, which is an auto-generated file, which has no business being committed. And that's issue number one. When you do git add dot, you're adding everything from the working directory to be staged for commit, even if it's things that should probably be in the .git ignore file. Things like the .ds store on a Mac or auto-generated files that you shouldn't be committing. And so if you do end up doing this, you do git add dot, and now both of these changes are staged for commit, and then you might run git commit, and that's issue number two with this process, which is that you have an additional step of opening up an editor, usually it's a Vim, and you don't even know how to exit Vim, let alone write a good commit message. So I'm just gonna pretend as if we went forward with this. So now you can see that we do have this bad commit. In order to get back to a better state, I'll just say git reset head with a tilde, which is undo the last commit. Basically it moves the current branch's head pointer back one commit. So now we're back to the normal state. If I do get status, we can see you have one legit change and one extraneous change. And by the way, if you haven't actually committed the changes yet, but you did run git add and now there, these are changes to be committed, you can simply run git reset and that will undo it. So now we're again back to the normal state. So here is what I actually recommend you do. It's very simple, just do git commit dash am and now you write your proper commit message. So if you do that, what you'll notice is that we still have that dot cache ds file, which we don't want to commit, that won't be added into our commit because it's not already being tracked by the repository. And then if I run git log, you can see that we do indeed have the actual commit message, which only will contain the file which is already being tracked. So what that means is in most cases, if you're not creating new files and you're just modifying existing files in the repository, then I strongly recommend you follow this approach of git commit dash am. It'll save you one step and it'll be a lot more easy to understand for you. Try this out next time. And if you've already been using it, hopefully now you have a better understanding of why it's valuable to do this approach as opposed to the alternative. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.